You will return to Outworld at once. Raiden, exploring the God of Thunder and one of the strongest characters in Mortal Kombat. When a god speaks, heed him. One of the most iconic characters in the Mortal Kombat series, the eternal God of Thunder and protector of Earth Realm, Raiden has been a fan favorite since his debut in the first Mortal Kombat game ever. He is primarily considered to be the driving force of the plotlines for which the Mortal Kombat series is famous. He is one of the most significant characters in the series and is also one of the most recognizable faces from Mortal Kombat even for people who are not fans of the genre as a whole. Hailing from the heavens, Raiden is among the top tier of fighters present in the universe of Mortal Kombat. He is arguably one of the strongest beings alive, only lesser to superior gods and titans. Even in the games, Raiden is a force to be reckoned with as his juggles and combos alongside his unblockables apply constant pressure on the opponent while being significantly more straightforward to use than that of other characters. He was one of those little brother types whom the elder brother bullied into submission so that they don't cry for their turn on the computer. In the hands of veteran players, Raiden is a character that screamed and you just know you're getting sent across the map as a seemingly maniacal god charges at you. Leader of the Earth Realm warriors and mentor to capable fighters such as Liu Kang and Kung Lao, Raiden is a being of high intellect. His knowledge is incomparable to mortals as he has lived for for millions of years, gaining knowledge and battle experience with every moment. Even though Raiden is known for his calm and composed demeanor, we get to see a much more immoral and uncharacteristic side of his when he assumes a darker role and becomes ruthless in his ways of protecting Earth Realm. Dark Raiden also plays a significant role in the story, which we will further discuss. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Raiden's creation was inspired by a Japanese god and a movie character. Japanese mythology is an underrated gem full of various interesting personalities and deities that have otherworldly origins and are watchful over the earth as they learn about humanity and the essence of how mortals live. As Japan has a rich mythological past and a rich cultural history as well, while both are pertaining to martial arts in some ways, it is easy for writers to create characters by taking inspiration from such legends. Mortal Kombat's Raiden was inspired by one such Japanese god of thunder, Raijin, in terms of powers, abilities, and godhood. In contrast, his appearance was inspired by a character from the 1986 movie Big Trouble in Little China made by John Carpenter. The movie had a character named Raiden who wore a straw hat and controlled electricity as per his wishes. The straw hat was a beautiful addition to the god of thunder as it makes his silhouette distinctive from that of the other fighters and adds an element of Japanese culture to Raiden, who has lived for millions of years. Ed Boon and John Tobias, who are the creators of the character, have mentioned in various forums that they are taking inspiration from myths and creating a character that is not only inspired by them, but also expands on their stories. This adds a certain amount of depth to the character, while also maintaining him as a separate entity, providing the audience with a familiar but overall new experience. Did you know that the animation of Raiden's iconic teleportation move was actually a result of a series of hilarious failed attempts in the process of motion capture? The performer Carlos Pessina did everything he could to hold the hat in place while he took bumps and threw punches and kicks. But unlike the game, the hat obeyed the laws of physics and kept falling. Boone and Tobias even attempted to manually reorient the performer's hat, but the final product was not coming out as expected. Eventually, they decided that that a god of thunder who could manipulate lightning could definitely teleport using the same powers. Going on the basis of this reasoning, they implemented the now iconic teleportation move that Raiden uses to get back up during a fight. Ed Boon reminisced about this happy accident on the 30th anniversary of the Mortal Kombat series by talking about it on Twitter.
Raiden's entire gaming lore explored with the best of his gameplay. Millions of years ago, the rogue elder god Shinnok wished to rule the earth and waged an all-out war on the earth realmers. The scale of the battle was so high that it could have led to the destruction of earth itself, but in his way stood Raiden as the protector of earth realm. After a hard-fought battle, he successfully defeated Shinnok with the guidance of the elder gods. He stripped the fallen elder god of his amulet, the source of Shinnok's godly powers and sealed him within his own amulet and hid it in a secret location in the nether realm. The looming threat of the fallen elder god was contained until when millions of years later, the elder Sub-Zero stole the amulet following the orders given to him by the sorcerer Quan Chi. Raiden appeared in front of the noble Lin Kuei and explained to the warrior the consequences that his actions would bring onto Earth realm. Sub-Zero understood the dire circumstances and did as he was requested successfully removing Shinnok as a threat at the time. It was essential for the Lin Kuei warrior to go to the nether realm and bring the amulet back himself as Raiden loses his power when he enters the realm. Earth realm's peaceful times were halted when Shang Tsung invited Raiden to participate in the Mortal Kombat tournament. This meant that Shang Tsung's master, the ruler of Outworld, Shao Kahn, had Earth realm as his next target in his conquest for complete dominion. Understanding the threat of Shao Kahn, Raiden entered the Mortal Kombat tournament in hopes of providing Earth Realm with a fighting chance. In the first Mortal Kombat tournament, Raiden collects Earth Realm's mightiest warriors in hopes that they will be strong enough to fight against the threat possessed by the warriors from Outworld. He sought Liu Kang of the Shaolin, Sub Zero from the Lin Kuei, and Sonya Blade from the Special Forces to be the ones fighting for Earth Realm. They prevailed with Liu Kang as Earth Realm's champion as he defeated Goro the Shokan and Shang Tsung. A whole year later, Raiden is invited to participate in another Mortal Kombat tournament by a now revitalized Shang Tsung. This time, the tournament is set to happen in Outworld. Aware of their dubiousness, Raiden warns the survivors of the Shaolin Temple and disappears alone into the Outworld. Following the tournament, successful in defending his realm once again through sheer determination and mastery of his skills, Liu Kang is victorious by defeating the tyrant himself, Shao Kahn. Enraged and embarrassed by his defeat, Shao Kahn unleashed his armies onto Earth Realm and started the invasion by force. Shao Kahn's forces seemed unstoppable, with a resurrected Queen Sindel fighting by his side. With Earth Realm's forces being overwhelmed and their souls stolen by Shao Kahn, it seemed as if there was no stopping the conqueror. Raiden was able to save a handful of his warrior souls from being stolen. Since Outworld was on the cusp of winning and Raiden was unable to battle due to the merging of the two realms, Shao Kahn temporarily became the ruler of Earth Realm. As a last resort, Raiden sacrificed his godhood so that he could fight alongside his allies. Shortly after, Liu Kang was successful in defeating Shao Kahn for the second time, saving the Earth from his might and allowing Raiden to return to his god status and his position as the protector of Earth Realm. However, Earth Realm's celebration of their triumph over a mad tyrant's invasion was short lived, as Shinnok had been released from his amulet in the Nether Realm, where Raiden trapped him in millions of years ago. Seeking revenge, Shinnok attacked the Elder Gods and killed as many of them as he could by catching them off guard and gaining an advantage. Since Earth's mortals were not how they used to be in the past, Liu Kang managed to gather Earth Realm's mightiest forces in order to defeat Shinnok under the guidance of his mentor Raiden. Even when battling fighters that possess godly powers, Liu Kang proved his excellence by defeating Shinnok and banishing him to the Nether Realm once more. Successful in fending off the attempts of the fallen Elder God time after time, Raiden was granted the status of Elder God and he put Fujin, the God of Wind, on the vacant pedestal as the protector of Earth Realm. With the defeat of Shinnok, it was the alliance of the sorcerers Quan Chi and Shang Tsung that posed an imminent threat on Earth Realm. In their deceitful ways, they killed Shao Kahn and set their sights on Liu Kang to eliminate their biggest threats firsthand. Unable to interfere due to his status as an Elder God, Raiden stood by as the deadly alliance of the sorcerers killed Liu Kang. With disgust for the ways of the Elder Gods and their refusal to intervene in such matters, Raiden renounced his role as an Elder God and gathered his warriors to stop the sorcerers. However, a tragedy occurred as the heroes of Earth were killed while battling the Turkatan hordes. In a desperate attempt to prevail over his enemies and protect Earth Realm, Raiden attacked Shang Tsung and Quan Chi in front of the Solnado all alone. 
The Deadly Alliance eventually defeated him and all seemed lost. The arrival of the Dragon King Onaga made a defeated Raiden get back his feet and fight alongside his enemies to defeat the more prominent threat in front of them. Quickly understanding that their attacks had no effect on Onaga, Raiden thought of countermeasures to defeat him. What followed was a massive explosion caused by the sacrifice of Raiden as he released all of his godly essence. The enormous blast annihilated the Deadly Alliance, wrecked the Dragon King's tomb and extinguished the Solnado, but did not harm Onaga one bit as Raiden's life force dissipated. Raiden's essence soon gathered in Earth Realm, but it was corrupted because of Onaga and he was enraged at how the people of the Earth treated the realm and decided to kill any defaulters should they endanger Earth Realm in any possible way. Furious upon knowing of Shujinko's quest to attain the Kamidogus of the realms that allowed Onaga to return, Raiden's patience ran out as he snapped and sought Shujinko to punish him for his deeds. Surprised as Sujinko survived his onslaught, Raiden thought of other extreme measures to fulfill his plan of action. He revived Liu Kang by extracting his body from his grave and utilizing the ancient sect of necromancers that the Huan used to restore the dead. Forcing Liu Kang's zombified corpse according to his will, Raiden sent him on missions to end any and every one that posed a threat to Earth Realm. Raiden's corrupted ways caught the attention of Shinnok. He approached him and offered an alliance that would ensure Earthrealm's safety at the hands of the fallen elder god if he would assist him in whatever ways required. Even though he was well aware of Shinnok's deceitful practices, Raiden accepted this offer and constantly tried to uncover Shinnok's plans. As events transpired, it was revealed that Raiden had struck a deal with Shao Kahn and would let the despot conquer all other realms if Earth Realm was left untouched. In agreement, Raiden was sent by Shao Kahn to eliminate Taven as the tyrant sought the godlike powers of Blaze all for himself. Unsuccessful in his attempt, Raiden was defeated by Taven and the latter left him unconscious on the ground, still in disbelief of his ways. Meanwhile, Fujin, the Wind God, sought Liu Kang's former ally Kung Lao's help in order to put a stop to Raiden's madness by either changing his outlook on Earth Realm or, if need be, eradicating his and the undead Liu Kang's existence. Following these events, it seemed as if Raiden had regained some of his sanity back as he fought on the side of light in the Battle of Armageddon. He engaged in battle with Shinnok and other forces of darkness. The two warriors that were left standing at the end of Armageddon were Raiden and the all-powerful Shao Kahn, as he had absorbed the powers of Blaze, allowing him to even surpass the might of the gods. Atop the Pyramid of Argus, as he failed at stopping Shao Kahn and was about to be killed, Raiden used the remains of his amulet to send his past self a message. This cryptic message was Raiden's last resort in assisting an alternate version of himself from the past to not suffer the same fate as him. The message was, he must win, as Shao Kahn smashed his head with his wrath hammer, killing the Thunder God. As the timeline shifts, the story continues as we are greeted with the first Mortal Kombat tournament in action at Shang Tsung's island. This Raiden of the past suddenly sees fragmented flash-forwards of the cryptic message from his future self, revealing to him his eventual death at the hands of Shao Kahn. With his own interpretation of the message, he must win, Raiden attempts to prevent Armageddon by influencing specific scenarios to go differently. He appoints Johnny Cage as one of his allies as he defeats Reptile and Baraka in the tournament, even though Cage is not ready to believe a word that Raiden and Liu Kang said. Raiden then assisted Sonya Blade in releasing Major Jackson Jax Briggs from his captivity. Since Raiden cannot participate in the tournament until directly challenged, he ensures that his warriors from Earth Realm engage in fair fights and receive his assistance for their safety while providing them with his guidance whenever he can. In an attempt to change one of his visions where Sub-Zero is killed by Scorpion and is subsequently turned into Noob Cybot, Raiden approaches the bloodthirsty Scorpion in order to evade the fate of Bihan. Raiden assured Scorpion that he would ask the Elder Gods to revive his clan and his family if he spared Bihan's life. Hanzo agreed, but later was persuaded and tricked by Quan Chi into killing Sub-Zero as he showed him how mercilessly Bihan had killed his family. 
But these visions were forged by Quan Chi as it was not revealed at this point of the story that in reality, it was the sorcerer Quan Chi himself who had killed Scorpion's clan and not the Lin Kuei warrior. Believing that his cryptic message from his future self saying he must win referred to Liu Kang, Raiden approaches the Shaolin before he takes on Goro and Shang Tsung and provides him with guidance as his mentor. Eventually, Liu Kang successfully defeats the Shokan and Shang Tsung to win the tournament and become the rightful champion of Earthrealm. However, Earthrealm's peace was not long-lasting as Shang Tsung approached Raiden to invite him for another Mortal Kombat tournament. Upon hearing no confirmation from the Thunder God, the Sorcerer opened up a portal to unleash a horde of Tarkatan warriors to assault the heroes. Understanding that such attacks from Outworld would continue to happen unless he accepted their invitation, Raiden agreed to another Mortal Kombat tournament. Sometime later, as Raiden and his warriors are in the Outworld, he seeks Princess Kitana and guides her in order for her to understand her origins and Shao Kahn's deeds. She comes across Melina in the flesh pits but is captured as soon as she defeats her. Kitana's lifelong friend and bodyguard Jade explains the princess's situation to Raiden, who then sends Liu Kang and Kung Lao to investigate. Upon discovering her in the Colosseum, Liu Kang goes to save her, leaving Kung Lao to participate in the tournament on behalf of Earthrealm. The talented Shaolin puts up a valiant effort and defeats Kintaro, Shang Tsung and Quan Chi. As he was boasting about his triumph over the Outworlders and the showcasing of his masterful skills, Kung Lao was killed by Shao Kahn as the Emperor blindsided the young Shaolin and snapped his neck. Enraged at the sight of his friend dying through unfair means, Liu Kang challenged Shao Kahn directly to mortal combat. As the hard-fought battle came to an end, Liu Kang punched a hole through Shao Kahn's chest, ending in his victory. Embarrassed at his defeat, Shao Kahn released his armies onto Earth Realm to invade Earth by force. While discussing the plan of action with the defenders of Earth Realm, Raiden decides that he should infer with the Elder Gods once. Raiden sought the Elder Gods' help in punishing Shao Kahn for invading Earth Realm without winning the tournament. But to his dismay, the Elder Gods refused to help as Shao Kahn had not yet broken the rules of Mortal Kombat. Disappointed at the outcome, Raiden returns to Earthrealm with Liu Kang to a horrific scene as most of his warriors were killed by a resurrected Queen Sindel who was brainwashed to act according to Shao Kahn's will. It was the sacrifice of Nightwolf that had put a stop to Sindel's onslaught, leaving only a few survivors. Seeing most of their allies suffer this fate, Liu Kang's belief in Raiden's dwindle further and he refused to accompany him to the Netherrealm. Raiden sought Quan Chi so that he could bargain a deal with the Sorcerer. His proposition was that the Sorcerer could have the souls of the Earthrealm warriors killed during the conflict if Netherrealm aids Earthrealm in their fight against the Outworld. He also offered his own soul if he was killed. Laughing at his face in return, Quan Chi mocks the desperate protector of Earthrealm and showcases how he already had the warrior's souls under his command as stated in the agreement he struck with Shao Kahn. In an onslaught of barraging attacks from his former allies turned revenants, Raiden fends off the most capable fighters all alone. However, his interaction with Quan Chi and the Revenants gave him insight as to what must be done. He had come to the revelation that the cryptic message, he must win, referred to Shao Kahn and not Liu Kang, as that would entail the Emperor breaking Mortal Kombat rules. In a last-ditch effort to protect Earthrealm, Raiden scurries back to the place where the two realms had initiated to merge together. He had come to the conclusion that the Emperor must be allowed to perform the merger of the realms. Since Shao Kahn did not win 10 consecutive Mortal Kombat tournaments, he would be breaking the rules and the Elder Gods would intervene. While awaiting Shao Kahn's arrival, Raiden is confronted by Liu Kang. The Shaolin is unable to see his realm being torn apart as all of his allies suffer the fate of death due to Raiden 
student's incapability to make the right decisions. In a disagreement, the mentor and the student indulge in a fight. As Raiden attempts to stop the Shaolin from interfering, Liu Kang tries to stop the madness that his former mentor is deeming as the right thing. In the most horrendous sequence of mishaps, Raiden's electricity creates a chain reaction with Liu Kang's fireball and the Shaolin is incinerated to death. This accident left Raiden full of dread and remorse as he held the corpse of his former student in his hands and Shao Kahn entered the Earth Realm. An emotionally stunned Raiden confronts Shao Kahn and concedes his defeat. In a one-sided beatdown, the previous timeline's Battle of Armageddon seemed to be recreating itself with Raiden on the cusp of death at the hands of the Emperor of Outworld. However, the Elder Gods finally intervened which was accurate to what Raiden had anticipated. Subsequently, the Elder Gods imbued Raiden with their powers so that Shao Kahn could be punished for his sins and for breaking the rules of mortal combat. In a glorious final battle, Raiden emerges victorious and destroys Shao Kahn with the powers of the Elder Gods, blasting him with a concentrated beam of energy. Triumphant, the protector of Earth Realm reunites with Johnny Cage and Sonya Blade as they attempt to rebuild the Earth. Still, the cost of their victory is too much for the heroes to bear, and Raiden Raiden blamed himself for the loss of his companions' lives, especially that of Liu Kang. Unbeknownst to them, all of this madness was orchestrated by none other than Quan Chi as part of his master Shinnok's plan to overtake Earth Realm and Outworld for himself. Several months had passed since Outworld's invasion of Earth Realm, but our hero's days of peace were numbered. Shinnok had returned and began his own invasion of Earth Realm. With hordes of demons, the Revenants, and Quan Chi on his side, the fallen Elder God was an enormous threat to Earth Realm's existence. Raiden and Fujin attempt to prevent Quan Chi and the undead Revenants from breaching the Jinsei chambers, while Johnny Cage, Sonya Blade, and Ken Chi rush towards the Sky Temple. Then Shinnok appears in front of Raiden and Fujin and the Revenants start attacking the two gods. Cabal's hooked swords pierce Raiden, but Raiden is able to use the weapons as a conduit for his lightning and knocks Cabal unconscious. He then assists Fujin by stunning Sindel to stop her from killing him. They are struck by Shinnok's amulet and are on the verge of being absorbed by it when Johnny Cage steps in. Shinnok is confronted and subsequently defeated by a pleasantly surprised Johnny Cage as he uses the magical green energy that protects him from Shinnok's advances. Raiden then seals the fallen elder god away with the power of his amulet. After a five-year time skip, we see Johnny Cage alongside Sonya Blade in an attempt to infiltrate Quan Chi's fortress in the Nether Realm. During the battle, Cage is stabbed in the back by the Revenant Jax and is seemingly on the verge of death. Johnny's Revenant form had started to take shape inside the fortress and Raiden entered Nether Realm to stop the process of Cage turning, only to be interrupted by Quan Chi. Sonia steps in and allows Raiden to continue with his spell and confronts Quan Chi. Raiden is successful in saving Johnny from this fate and subsequently reverses the spell and frees Jax, Scorpion and Sub-Zero from their revenant selves by turning them back into humans. Another five years later, as Kung Jin steals an heirloom from the temple, Raiden confronts him and suggests that he should put the heirloom back where it belongs. Since Kung Jin sees Raiden as the reason for Kung Lao's death, he disregards the god's advice, forcing Raiden to take the heirloom back himself. As Raiden tries talking some sense into Kung Jin, they indulge in a fight, and Raiden later reveals that he just wanted Jin to release his anger before they could speak. He advises Kung Jin to join the Wuxi Academy and become a Shaolin monk just like Kung Lao was. Jin is hesitant as he assumes that the Academy will reject him as he is a homosexual. Still, Raiden assures him by saying that the Academy would only care about what is in his heart rather than his sexuality. Raiden mentioned that it was not too late for him and gave Jin the heirloom to honor Kung Lao's demise. It is 20 years later that the warriors of Earth Realm receive a distressing piece of information from a refugee from Outworld named Li Mei. She reveals that Melina is now in possession of an amulet that provides her with unchecked power that even she is not able to control. Raiden, now suspicious that such a description could be pointing towards Shinnok's amulet, goes off to check whether the amulet was still in their possession or not. He realizes that the powerful relic has been replaced with a duplicate and informs Sonia of the possible consequences at hand. Much later, as Raiden 
sought the Jinsei to recover his strength, he is approached by Bo Raicho, who displays his growing concerns over Shinnok's possible return. Raiden mentions that he plans to restore their allies that are under Quan Chi's control by capturing the sorcerer alive. He also depicts his feelings over losing his students during Shao Kahn's invasion, Liu Kang and Kung Lao, whom he saw as sons. He regarded that he would move the heavens to bring them back before entering the Jinsei. As he regained his strength in the Jinsei chamber, Raiden sensed a considerable disturbance around him. He further notices a massive hole in the roof as he sees Bo Rai Cho being dragged off in pain. As Raiden emerges outside the chamber, he sees that Shinnok had returned alongside the revenant versions of Sindel, Kitana, Liu Kang, Kung Lao and Smoke as the fallen elder god was extracting the life force of Bo Rai Cho through his amulet. Surrounded by the revenants, Raiden is incapable of helping Cho. Liu Kang then asks Shinnok if he could kill Raiden, but he refuses as he wants to seal Raiden and provide him with the same fate as his for his revenge. Raiden then starts to fight the revenants and finally comes across Kung Lao, who is infuriated with Raiden for allowing Shao Kahn to kill him. Kung Lao is defeated by Raiden, who claims that Kung Lao deserved a better fate. Liu Kang then blindsides Raiden and starts attacking him. Liu Kang even taunts Raiden by asking whether he could still see the future, leading Raiden to exclaim that it was not Liu Kang's fate either. Liu Kang claims that Raiden was the reason he was killed and Raiden responds by saying that he understands what has been done and that his death was an accident that haunts him to this day. Liu Kang responds by promising to accompany Shinnok in putting a stop to the Elder Gods. As the two fight, Raiden comes out victorious over the revenant versions of his former student whom he considered a son. In an effort to halt Shinnok, Raiden enters the Jinsei chamber, but he is unable to confront him as he has grasped him with his powers. Shinnok had captured him and Johnny Cage and was proclaiming the end of the world, but Raiden assured him that they were still warriors who possessed the power to resist Shinnok. Cassie Cage, who possessed the same magical powers that Johnny used in his fight against Shinnok, arrived on time and was able to defeat the rampaging Elder God. As Kung Jin was tending to his wounds, Raiden commanded them to take him to the Jinsei so that he could purify it. He is successful in purifying the Jinsei and the heroes are victorious due to the heroics of Cassie Cage. But as it was later revealed, Raiden had been corrupted during the process of cleansing the Jinsei from Shinnok as he confronted the new rulers of Nether Realm, the Revenants, Liu Kang and Kitana. Claiming that he had become frustrated to see Earth Realm suffer, Raiden threatened the rulers by stating that he would not stand by defensively and would seek the people who threatened Earth Realm and destroy them without any mercy or remorse. He displays the severed head of the immortal Shinnok on the ground and exclaims that there are fates worse than death and then promptly leaves. After Raiden decapitated Shinnok and left the Jinsei after explaining that no one would escape his wrath if they were to threaten Earth Realm, Kronika, the Titaness of Time, appeared in front of Shinnok and stated that the Thunder God had upset the balance of history and that her son Shinnok was never to suffer this fate. Later, Raiden would command the special forces in their preemptive strike on Nether Realm. Inside, with Raiden serving as cover, Cassie and the special forces launched their assault. He instantly teleports everyone back to Earth Realm after the demolition the temple, where he informs Cassie that Sonia died a warrior's death. But Cassie and Jackie are frustrated at Raiden's lack of empathy and his treatment of Cassie's mother as just another soldier. Sometime later, the special forces are witness to weird anomalies that are taking place as younger versions of Johnny Cage, Sonia Blade and Jax appear while the corrupted Raiden disappears. At the same time, an uncorrupted version of Raiden spawns in the Colosseum in Outworld along with a bunch of other other warriors from the past, including Shao Kahn in front of Kotal Khan. Surprised and confused, Raiden mentions that they were at the first Mortal Kombat tournament before they were sent to this reality. As Shao Kahn realizes that his former general Kotal had announced himself as Khan, he is enraged and engages in battle with him to usurp his throne. As Kotal is about to lose, Raiden and his allies assist the honorable Kotal and fight against Shao Kahn. Forced to retreat, the Emperor from the 
Mars devises his plan of action against Kotal to reclaim his throne, while Raiden heads back to Earth Realm with the Shaolins on his side to see what is going on. Since Kronika had attempted to rewrite history and remove Dark Raiden from existence from the creation of a new era, this past version of Raiden came into being due to him being immortal. Learning of his future self's fate, this Raiden ensured the Shaolins that he would not let that fate be true for them. Meanwhile, a self-destructing sector who was activated by Kano destroys the command center at the Special Forces base. With the base destroyed, Raiden brings him and his allies to Hanzo Hasashi's fire gardens. They are approached by a younger scorpion who attempts to inform them that they should seek Karon's assistance. Not ready to hear anything from him, as he killed Sub-Zero despite Raiden's warnings, the Thunder God attacks and defeats the younger scorpion. Liu Kang, however, wanted to at least hear him out before beating him, to which Raiden refuses and exclaims that he demands Liu Kang's obedience and not his trust. Showing signs of becoming corrupt again, Raiden fights Liu Kang, but suddenly comes to an insightful realization and stops as he whispers this has happened before. He is then bombarded with visions from alternate realities where he battles Liu Kang across different battlefields, attires and timelines only to always result in Liu Kang's death at his hands. As the visions end, he falls to the ground and realizes the errors in his ways before throwing away the amulet, healing the injured scorpion and apologizing to Liu Kang. He explains his vision to Liu Kang and ensures that he will no longer be manipulated by Kronika as he has come to the realization that it is Kronika who pits Raiden and Liu Kang against each other in every timeline, resulting in Liu Kang's death. Then Kronika stops time and speaks with Raiden in private, praising him for spotting the pattern. She remarks that his and Liu Kang's combined talents constitute a threat to her vision despite his claim that he does not figure the motivation. She then pulls Liu Kang away for his revenant counterpart to absorb his soul as Raiden continues to oppose her. As the timeline resumes normalcy, the others start to worry about where Liu Kang has gone. Raiden informs them that Kronika has seized him and that they must launch their attack right now, subsequently believing the younger Scorpion's assurance that Karon would help them. Later, as they appoint Karon's help in traversing the deadly waters of the Sea of Blood en route to Kronika's keep, they are attacked by an older Jax, Frost and the Cyber Lin Kuei. As Raiden defeats Jax and explains to him that that what he thinks of Kronika is wrong, they are attacked by Geras, a subordinate of Kronika's creation who cannot die. To counter him, Raiden binds him to an anchor and drops him in the bottomless sea of blood. As the battle rages on, Raiden is attacked by the Revenant Liu Kang and defeats him in a tough battle. But instead of killing the evil Revenant, Raiden merges himself and past Liu Kang's deceased body with the Revenant Liu Kang. This transforms them into Fire God Liu Kang, with Liu Kang's consciousness coming out on top while retaining the memories of his counterpart. As the merger of the two fight Kronika in an uphill battle, Fire God Liu Kang defeats countless foes that Kronika throws at him and with his new godly powers, he overwhelms Kronika and kills her at the dawn of time. Raiden is later separated from the Fire God and becomes a mortal while Liu Kang becomes a god. The former Thunder God grants upon Liu Kang the pedestal of the protector of Earth Realm and stows Kronika's keep to him as well. With so much responsibility at hand, Liu Kang remarks that he cannot handle the task of watching over time alone, to which Raiden responds that he will advise him as long as he lives before they start reshaping the sands of time together since the conflict brought them to the beginning of time to create a new history. In the aftermath that followed, as Liu Kang and the now mortal Raiden are approached by Shang Tsung, Fujin and Nightwolf, the sorcerer proclaims that they cannot use Kronika's hourglass unless they have her crown of souls in their possession. So Liu Kang allows Shang Tsung to return in time and retrieve a past version of the crown. As he is renowned for his constant betrayal and treacherous ways, it was an uneasy sight for the heroes to be accompanied by the sorcerer, as while in the past, he assists a younger Raiden in saving the future by securing the crown. Much to the volley of their suspicions, Shang Tsung betrays everyone during their final battle. Knowing of his deceit, Raiden and Fu Fujin attempt to stop him but are defeated and drained of their souls. The sorcerer did not get rid of their bodies, however, as he had plans for them later. This comes into play if the player chooses the bad ending, as we see Raiden serving Shang Tsung and fulfilling all his wishes by supporting him in conquering all the realms.
I don't think so. He has been an integral part of Mortal Kombat movies. The first Mortal Kombat movie was released in 1995. Raiden was portrayed by Christopher Lambert and the overall character is similar to that in the games as he remains the god of thunder and protector of Earth Realm and rallies his team of warriors in hopes of defending Earth Realm from the wrath of their possible invaders. He does everything in his power to ensure Earth Realm's victory in the Mortal Kombat tournament. One thing that the movie added to his character was the element of humor that he lacks in the games. There are countless moments in the movie where Raiden makes snarky remarks and the others do not follow his sharp wits. Raiden acts as the warrior's backbone throughout the movie as he motivates and inspires them to overcome any adversity with their capabilities and bravado. A concept that the games adapted in the oncoming years from this movie was the fact that Raiden cannot directly compete in the tournaments. This creates an environment where it adds further tension to the story by relying on the powers of the mortal warriors for Earth Realm's triumph. Mortal Kombat Annihilation was the 1997 sequel to the original film and Raiden was portrayed by James Remmer. We get to know more about Raiden's godhood in this movie as it is revealed that in the hierarchy of gods, Raiden is lower than the Elder Gods. He is seen seeking Elder Gods counsel as Shao Kahn begins his invasion of Earth Realm since Raiden believes it to be a breach of the rules of Mortal Kombat. To his dismay, the Elder the gods refuse to interfere and subsequently give mixed responses when asked for a way to defeat the Emperor of Outworld. In a series of unfortunate losses for the Earth Realmers as the situation worsens, while Liu Kang is trying to learn the power of the animality and Nightwolf claims that he can defeat Shao Kahn, Raiden shocks his allies by revealing that he had sacrificed his immortality in order to assist them in the battle for Earth Realm's survival. With the plan of action to reunite Kitana with her mother Queen Sindel, the heroes head to Outworld, where Raiden first battles a trio of reptilian warriors who he defeats with ease. He then assists others in neutralizing Queen Sindel, who is under the control of Shao Kahn. As Sindel flees, the heroes notice the tattoos on Raiden's shoulders, which he reveals to be a family crest that allows him to practice interdimensional transport safely. In a shocking revelation, Raiden reveals that he is the brother of Shao Kahn, while Shinnok is their father. It soon dawns on Raiden that it was Shinnok's trickery that made him go on a quest to reunite Kitana and Sindel so that Shao Kahn can remain free. With a new plan, Earth's warriors fight their way to the final battle with Shao Kahn and his subordinates. The fight between Liu Kang and Shao Kahn is interrupted by none other than Shinnok, who demands that Raiden surrenders and reunites his family at the expense of his mortal friends, which he refuses without losing a breath. Hearing this, Shao Kahn kills Raiden with a massive energy blast and Liu Kang holds his mentor during his final breaths. With motivations higher than ever to win, Earth Realm's warriors are triumphant over the Outworlders as the power of animality turns out to be useful to defeat Shao Kahn. Just as Shinnok was about to interfere in their fight, the other two Elder Gods appeared as they had found out about Shinnok's treachery and declared that Earth's fate should be only decided through mortal combat. Following this, Liu Kang defeats the Emperor and Shinnok is banished to the Nether Realm. Later, Raiden is revived by the Elder Gods, who bestow upon him Shinnok's former position. As he is about to leave with the other gods, Raiden encourages his mortal friends and says he will be watching over them. Mortal Kombat 2021 film is the reboot of live-action Mortal Kombat movies and Raiden is portrayed by Tadanobu Asano. During the recruitment process for fighting off the forces of Outworld, Liu Kang gathers a Earth's warriors who quite underwhelm Raiden. Since Earthrealm has lost the previous nine consecutive Mortal Kombat tournaments, he does not have much hope for this new group of fighters. He points out their lack of arcana control, attitude, and arrogance. Cole Young, who is one of the recruits, shows his eagerness and willingness to do whatever it takes to protect Earthrealm as he explains that they killed his family. Soon, Earth's warriors are surprised by the appearance of Shang Tsung accompanied by some of his fighters. 
universe. The sorcerer claims that he has come to claim Earth Realm, to which Raiden implies that it is forbidden to claim victory before winning 10 consecutive tournaments. Shang Tsung then counters it by exclaiming that any conflict outside of Mortal Kombat is not prohibited as he orders his fighters to attack. Raiden is quick to put up a barrier between them to save his warriors from this ambush. During training, as Cole repeatedly fails to access his arcana, Raiden declares him a liability and explains to him his lineage as he is the descendant of the great Hanzo Hasashi, who before being murdered, ensured his son's survival so that his bloodline lives on. Following this, Shang Tsung launches his invasion of Raiden's temple with the help of the betrayal of Kano, while Goro attacks Cole Young at his home. Backed into a corner, Cole emerges victorious as he finally unlocks his arcana. This incident fills Raiden with glee as he mocks the sorcerer and exclaims that the Hasashi bloodline lives on even after 4,000 years. Angered at this slight and Goro's loss, Shang Tsung sucks the sword of Kung Lao killing him. As Raiden consoles Liu Kang for his friend's death, he explains that as an elder god, he cannot save every soul of Earthrealm's inhabitants, as although it is his job to protect Earthrealm, he cannot get involved in the war between the realms. Cole Young then rallies up his allies and prepares a plan of action to defeat their foes. He utilizes Raiden's abilities of teleporting anyone to anywhere on Earth to the fullest, as his plan is to dissect the outworld warriors and fight them one versus one. As the plan works to fruition, Shang Tsung appears once more. As the sorcerer claims that he will come back to Earthrealm and eventually conquer it, Raiden teleports him away in the middle of his tiresome talking. Victorious, Raiden assures his warriors that there will be more battles to come and he will continue to assemble Earthrealm's champions. Raiden as seen in Mortal Kombat comic books. In his own three-issue miniseries titled Raiden and Kano, Raiden co-starred and his character remained more or less the same but he was also accompanied by two female servants named Wind and Rain. Unlike how the other gods refrain from interfering with human affairs, it is noted in this miniseries that Raiden never remained passive and consistently worked to support the forces of good in the never-ending conflict between Earth realm and outworld. After saving Kano's life, Raiden sought to offer Kano a sword named Ebon Rule, which drew power from a malevolent warrior who switched his outlook on right and wrong and turned to the side of good. The strength of the sword was such that Raiden believed Kano would defeat Shao Kahn with it, but instead Kano surrendered it to Shao Kahn in return for godlike abilities, leaving Raiden to understand that his efforts would never tilt the scales of good and and evil. In the final tournament edition issue, Raiden is seen taking control of a team of Earthrealm's warriors and guiding them to compete in Shao Kahn's tournament held in Outworld. Ultimately, he sacrifices his life to save his team and allies from Kano, Goro, Kintaro and Smoke's assault. Raiden also makes a plethora of appearances in the Mortal Kombat comic series as the basic foundation of his character remains the same. He is the Thunder God and protector of Earthrealm and acts as a mentor and leader to Earthrealm's warriors by providing them with his insights and guidance. His rivalry with Shang Tsung was often highlighted as they seemingly were bitter enemies. It was revealed that Raiden was forbidden from intervening in the affairs of mortals in the sequence where Johnny Cage attempts to answer the questions in the Tao Te Zan, a series of books that grant the reader with great powers if they are able to solve a total of seven riddles, and Raiden refuses to help him. In the miniseries titled Blood and Thunder, it was also established that Raiden was not allowed to enter the Mortal Kombat tournament due to his godhood, unlike in the first Mortal Kombat game. I don't think so. What makes Raiden such a powerhouse? Firstly, Raiden is immortal. A plethora of antagonistic characters in fiction aim to achieve immortality to become the absolute evil, while Raiden is already immortal, which is a huge plus point when talking about his fighting capabilities. Raiden possesses immense strength and endless techniques mixed with martial arts, and as Thunder God, his ability to manipulate lightning. Able to fire concentrated blasts of lightning at his foes from a distance, 
he is also capable of becoming ethereal and teleporting behind his enemies for a surprise attack. He can even use his electrical powers in conjunction with his telekinesis to move objects freely around him without coming in contact with them. He is able to use lightning as his weapon for both ranged and close quarters combat, but he has also been seen carrying a staff for millennia that he uses to attack his enemies with blunt force and even as a conduit for his electricity. He can even conjure energy barriers that protect him and his allies from outside forces. His movements during battle have been stated to be as fast as lightning, and he even possesses the ability of flight. Raiden has shown incredible feats of durability unlike any other character in the Mortal Kombat games as he is seen battling hordes of enemies without breaking a sweat and can even fight multiple capable fighters at once. This is evident in the fights against his former allies turned revenants accompanied by the likes of Sindel and the Lin Kuei. In the battle against Shinnok and his forces, Raiden defeats the revenant forces that had ambushed and surrounded him, including his former pupils Liu Kang and Kung Lao. Garnering knowledge and experience for millions of years, Raiden is highly intellectual and is renowned for his guidance and mentorship of Earthrealm's warriors. He is even gifted with foresight and can perceive future events before they even take place. He can also detect life signatures around him due to a heightened degree of senses and can locate others' presence, preventing his enemies from attempting stealth against him. He is a master in the art of magical spells and is capable of reversing spells from the strongest sorcerers alive. He showcases this during his feat of saving Johnny Cage from turning into a revenant by reversing Quan Chi's spell and also saving multiple other fighters from his control. He also possesses the powers to heal and resurrect others, but it drains a lot of his energy. Conclusion Raiden is an iconic character from the Mortal Kombat series and a driving force for their stories. The character has been a fan favorite since the beginning and poses as a significant part of the universe of Mortal Kombat. He has seen a lot of development throughout the years, but not much has changed about the character as the roots of his foundation remain to be the same throughout the storyline. Everything he does is targeted toward the protection of Earth Realm. Even when he was corrupted and became Dark Raiden, he was absolved of all his mercy and remorse from fighting his foes that threatened Earth Realm only for the realm's protection. Even though Raiden is a god, we see him making mistakes and bearing the weight of the deaths of his allies on his shoulders. The sense of remorse and not being good enough is what makes the character so lovable as he shows how even godly beings are not always correct and can cause errors in their judgments. We see him amend for his mistakes each time by showing sheer determination and willpower to overcome any adversity that is thrown in front of him. He has defeated numerous foes that are stronger than him in the hierarchy through the powerful bond of trust and teamwork he possesses with his allies. Now that you know all about this memorable fighter from the critically acclaimed series, stay tuned for more such interesting stories of characters from the Mortal Kombat universe. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.